So today I want to talk about the, uh, we're still talking about the judgments right now. Uh, we kind of having to condense it a little bit. So I'm going to talk about, I might skip a few sections of it. If you want to read the entirety of the book, I still recommend getting Father von Kochem's The Four Last Things. It's excellent. Uh, so I still recommend doing that. And uh, we're going to have to truncate the judgment. And uh, next week we'll be doing the meditation on heaven. But I'll try to get as much done as possible. So uh, today, five points to, to cover. And then after that, I will read from Father von Kochem directly. And we'll uh, discuss that. So number one, the heavens will be open and the sign of Christ's triumphant victory, the sign of the Holy Cross, will be carried down by a host of angels and exhibited to the whole world. So that's the that's point number one that needs to be recalled. See, the uh, that we recognize that there will be a sign at the end of the time that's going to appear in the sky, and that will be the sign of the cross. Um, and it won't just be the, a sign of the cross, like kind of like what we do like that. It's, it's gonna, going to be the actual cross itself. It's going to be the cross that Christ was crucified on. Uh, okay, number two. Although the cross whereupon our Lord suffered is now divided into innumerable little pieces, into particles even, yet by divine power it will once more f- form a complete whole. Now, this is also important because the... Uh, we see now today, uh, it was true in Father Von Kochem's time, and it's true even more so today. There are so many churches that have pieces of the true cross. They cut off tiny slivers where you, you get the piece and you look at it and you're like, oh, okay, I see the true cross there. They start splitting it up and they spread it to churches all over the world. In fact, my parish, Annunciation in Houston, uh, has a piece of the true cross there. And we uh, and Father Felix there uh, blesses people with the, tri- the, um, the relic of the true cross many uh, times a year. So uh, what it's saying is, all the pieces, just like uh, how in our resurrected bodies, no matter where our bodies have been spread out throughout the world, um, God will unite our bodies together again at the end uh, whenever we are resurrected, no matter how much our bodies have been decayed. And so, too, with the cross, our Lord will bring back together his, cru- his, uh, his cross uh, to be the sign. And he'll do that um, by way of the angels. Numero three. The angels will carry all the other instruments of the passion. And so you will see uh, first and foremost in the sky, you will see the cross, um, but also all the instruments of the passion, the hammer, the nails, uh, the whips, uh, the rod that was struck, the uh, crown of thorns, all the instruments of uh, our Lord's uh, passion will be brought forth in a procession of uh, relics of our Lord's passion. And that will stir in our hearts such uh, terror and sadness of uh, seeing the instruments of our Lord's pain. And you can also see this kind of prefigurement of this when you look at the uh, the icon of Our Lady Perpetual Help. You'll see in the top two corners the angels carrying the instruments of our uh, Lord's crucifixion. Now, number four, then the bitterest remorse will fill the heart of the wicked. But this remorse, how great and how deep soever it will may be, will be futile because it comes too late. Okay, so whenever we see the things that are coming towards us, now this is also, this is incredibly important. When we see the uh, instruments of our Lord's crucifixion, we see the cross coming towards us, we will recognize how awful it was uh, that our sins are what put our Lord on the cross. Now, Father Von Kochum has quite a bit to say about this particular part, and I recommend going and listening to the entirety of it, which you can find at the uh, Catholic Drive Time Facebook page or my personal YouTube channel, uh, Adrian Fonseca. Uh, so you, uh, at this time, it's going to, you're st- going to stir in your heart this kind of sadness and depression. You're going to feel like you're going to be remorseful, uh, but it's going to be too late. There is no more repentance at this point. Uh, you will not be saved. Um, And then those who are saved already, the just, will also feel the same repentance and same remorse of ever having offended God. Uh, But it won't be a a, um, depressing kind of feeling. It won't be an abandonment of hope. Uh, Instead, it will you will still have sadness, but it won't be the same. Um, The example that Father Von Kochem gives in his meditation is the example of Judas. Judas felt remorse at the end of his life, but instead of uh, repentance, he uh, committed suicide. So this is kind of what he kind of compares it to. He also gives the comparison of Cain from uh, the story of Cain and Abel, if you're familiar. 
Uh, so I recommend going and listening to that. Number five, what thou would uh, what thou would you say if you did perceive that had been the cause of Christ's suffering and had crucified him by your sins? So he's asking you, meditate on what you would say if 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 our Lord appeared to you today, if he came to you and said, tell me, how do you feel? What do you think about the fact that it is actually your sins that has put me on this cross, that has caused me all this torture? You're the reason that the whips scourge my back bare. You're the reason that the rod struck my head, driving the crown of thorns deeper through my skull. What would you say? What would you think? That, that's the meditation that uh, Father Von Kochem has asked us to uh, make uh, while on this section. So this was where the uh, this part will end. Um, if you want to hear, I'm going to grab, if you're watching on Instagram, you'll see I'll grab the prayer and move it here. Otherwise, uh, I am about to go into the actual reading of Father Von Kochem's meditations. When all mankind are assembled in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the prediction of our Lord will be fulfilled. Men withering away for fear and expectation of what shall come upon the whole earth. For they will be in, in, in such anxiety and terror and anticipation of the approaching judgment that if such a thing were possible, they would faint away. They will look up to, hev- to the heavens continually with fear and trembling. And every moment that the coming of the dreaded judge is delayed will serve to increase their apprehension of this advent. At length, the heavens will be opened and the sign of Christ's triumphant victory, the sign of the Holy Cross, will be carried down by a host of angels and exhibited to the whole world. These are our Lord's words in regard to this mystery. The powers of heaven shall be moved and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn. The Catholic Church teaches us what this sign will be, which is to appear in heaven. The sign of the cross will appear in heaven when the Lord shall come to judgment. All the fathers concur in interpreting this sign, which will be displayed in the heavens as the cross of Christ. Although the cross whereupon our Lord suffered is now divided into innumerable little pieces, into particles even, yet by divine power, it will once more form a complete whole. It will be carried down from heaven by the angels with solemn pomp, and the angels who bear it will be followed by others, who, as the angelic doctor St. Thomas Aquinas maintains, will carry all the other instruments of the passion. That is to say, the pillar, the lance, the scourges, the hammer, the iron glove, the dice, the scarlet robe, the white robe, the seamless tunic, the holy uh, winding sheet, the vessel containing myrrh, and all the other instruments that were employed during the Passion. And the object of this will be to, will be to manifest to the whole world how many and manifold were the pains Christ suffered for our sakes. Now, when all mankind behold the Holy Cross and all other sacred instruments of the Passion, shining like the sun at midday, for the cross of Christ will gleam with the light of unexempt, unexampled brilliance. Those who are waiting below will stand in trembling fear and woeful lamentation. For the sight of the Holy Cross and the other instruments of torture will recall to their mind all the grievous pain that our Lord endured. And indeed, it's so in so forcible and vivid a manner that his whole passion will seem to be reenacted before them. Then the bitterest remorse will fill the heart of the wicked. But this remorse, how great and how deep soever it may be, will be futile. It comes too late. This remorse is the compassion, the companion of despair. In their anguish of soul and their de- de- in their despair, they will exclaim with Cain, the fratricide. My iniquity is greater than I may deserve pardon. Or with Judas, who betrayed his Lord and Master, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. Yet all the, whole, all the lost will concur in exclaiming, Alas, we have sinned in betraying innocent blood. We have tortured, we have crucified, we have put the Son of God to death by our sins. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, for they will perceive how grievously they have offended against God. But the cries of mourning and despair prevailing everywhere everywhere will be in vain. What will the unfortunate heathen say who has never heard, never known anything about Christ's passion? 
They will bitterly bewail and lament their ignorance, saying, Alas, we unhappy ones, had we but known this, we should have never come to this misery. Had we but known that the great and infinite God did and suffered so much for us, how grateful we should have been to him, how willingly we would have served him. We were deluded by our false gods. We saw in them no virtues, only vile and vicious deeds. Against the prompting of conscience, we imitated their vices, and hence we are damned. We cannot complain or think ourselves wrong by the holy and just God, because we are amongst the reprobate. If only we had hearkened to the voice of our conscience, this would not have been our fate. But those who say, but those who, who but the, but what will those say who put Christ to death? Pilate, Caiaphas, Ananias, the high priest, as well as the Jews who cried, crucify him and his blood be upon us and upon our children and all who took part in the cruel, atrocious crime of crucifying their God. Will at the sight of the sacred instruments of the passion shriek aloud in despair and desire to be annihilated, exercated and cursed even by the damned. They will stand there branded as deicides, objects of abhorrence to the whole world. It is not my intention to discuss what bad Christians who have blasphemed the Son of God by word or deed will feel at that time. For brevity's sake, I leave thee, reader, to meditate upon meditate upon it for thyself. Only one thing I would ask of thee: reflect upon this: what thou wouldst say, what thou wouldst most deeply regret, if thou wert amongst the number of the damned, and didst then perceive that thou hadst been the cause of Christ's sufferings. And hadst crucified him by thy sins. Couldst thou now feel in thy heart something of the contrition which would then pierce thy soul? Assuredly thou wouldst never again, for the remainder of thy life, commit any heinous sin. Couldst thou now mourn over the sufferings of Christ with expressions of such poignant sorrow as would then rise to thy lips? Thou wouldst infallibly obtain the remission of thy sins. Wherefore, frequently adore the crucified Savior. Call to mind his sufferings for thy sake and recite the following prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. O faithful Redeemer of the world, who didst endure such unspeakable sufferings for me, a miserable sinner, I pray thee, not, uh, I pray thee let not thy bitter passion in thy death upon the cross be unavailing for me. Impress the remembrance of them deeply upon my heart, that I may have... Ne- that I may have them ever before my mind and may avoid sin, which was the cause of thy suffering. Thus, when thy cross shall appear bright and shining in the heavens on the day of judgment, may not be to me a sign of damnation, but of salvation, a sign of thy mercy and of thy love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.